In this video, there's one more interesting group of elements that I want to introduce to you. But first, I'd like you to just pause and look at all that we've learned already about the elements in the periodic table. First of all, we learned the gross ana ana anatomical structure, the S block, the P block, the D block, and the F block. We learned that sometimes element number one, which is hydrogen, belongs on helium's side of the table, and other times helium belongs on hydrogen's side of the table. When we're talking about S block, it's a time that helium belongs on hydrogen's side of the table. We also saw that the S block contains what are called the good or the strong metals. The P block contains the halogens and some of the inert gases. Um, there's also this the heavy um, brown line, as it's, as it's done here, that separates out the metals from the nonmetals. The only nonmetals among the elements are, are on the right side of that line. Everything to the left of that line, these are all metals. We saw that the metals that are in the P block are called poor metals. Um, we also saw that the metals in the D block are called transition metals. As we learned, we've learned about two families, the inert gases and the halogens. We've also learned about the orphans at the bottom in the F block, that they actually have a name called the lanthanides and the actinides. And we learned that the lanthanides really belong in row 6 and the actinides really belong in row 7. So, um, but if they were placed there, how the the periodic table would be very long and unwieldy. Plus, it would be the D block and the F block wouldn't stand out quite as nicely as they do in this case. While we were learning about the, the lanthanides and the actinides, we also identified mercury, gold, and platinum, which are three metals that we're all very familiar with that turn out to be transition metals um, living in row six of the periodic table. The group that I want to introduce you to in this video are called the noble metals. There are eight noble metals and they form their own little block on the chart. You already see two of them placed here. Platinum and gold are two of the noble metals. They're called noble metals because they're precious and valuable as well as being very resistant to corrosion. In honor of gold, I'm going to outline the block with a kind of a gold color. I think it's going to be gold. Mercury is not a noble metal. Um, and the other ones live in row 5. So the noble metals live in row 5 and row 6, uh, platinum and gold. The other two noble metals that are in row 7 are osmium and iridium. The ones that are in row 5 are ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, and silver. I know you've all heard of silver. Uh, rhodium is a metal that's currently being used in making wedding rings to give a fantastic silvery shine that's very resistant to being scratched um, to wedding rings. Now I'd like you to notice how silver is right above gold in the chart. Recall that both silver and gold derive their names from their Latin, uh, derive their abbreviations from their Latin names. So this is silver, A-G, and this is gold, A-U. Now I've written them up here in this order because oddly enough the one, the element that is, lives right above silver in the chart is copper. Copper's abbreviation also comes from its Latin name, cupric. Now why is this kind of fantastic? Because Copper is the main uh, metal, is the primary metal in the, in the alloy that's called bronze. And so right here in the periodic table, you have the Olympic medals, gold, silver, and bronze represented. Now, why wouldn't copper be considered a noble metal? Well, have you ever seen what happens to the Statue of Liberty? It's a copper statue, and it's certainly sub subject to corrosion because it turns green. Remember that the noble metals are both precious 
and they're very resistant to corrosion. I wonder if any of you, while we were watching that presentation, noticed the mistake that I had in the table. There was a very glaring mistake, but not glaring enough to me to catch it in the first place. That was that I wrote the abbreviation <coughs> for cerium when I should have written the abbreviation for cesium. Cerium actually belongs here in the lanthanides. The first metal in row six is cesium. If you copied it wrong, get busy and copy it right. Um, row six is cesium and then barium. The lanthanides are lanthanum and then cerium. <laughs> 